indicator. I've been known to spit the fruits and make it shaky, shaky thing. Popping, lock and stop and let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like a stain. We make a whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. We kick it old school. We think we're so cool. We take it back to the past. We gonna act a fool. Laugh, enough jumps, the middle finger make my gay. Sports Buzz, The Fanatical View. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio, Comcast Cable Channel 23, downtown Damery, Connecticut, on this late September day, the 24th, if it you're was uh, checking a, your calendar. It was a very nice day. Another lovely day, you know. A little chilly this morning. It was like 48, 49 degrees. True, it's true. It's been getting below the 50. The fall weather is uh, creeping up on us, but pretty warm during the day. This weekend, Sunday was definitely chilly oh, for a little while. Oh, it was beautiful. The sun, but, Sunday was gorgeous. Uh, but it warmed up. It was hot and humid Saturday for a while before things cooled off. So fall is definitely in the air as uh, the first day of fall was actually yesterday, the yes. 23rd. Yes. I have. Usually I thought it was always on the 21st, but two years in a row yeah. uh, it was on the 23rd. Which is a little And I had some surprising. beautiful weather up at the Big E yesterday. Well, I went to the Big E yesterday. I didn't get any family. pictures of that. I was busy getting pictures of him at SNIRA, the yes. Southern New York Racing Association, on Sunday, as they had a pretty good crowd there, it looks like. We had a beautiful crowd, uh, a lot of drivers, a lot of. Uh, but actually, we had a banner uh, crowd. Right, everybody was turned out for that crowd, looks like, Look for the big show. They were ready to go, so that's good. Um, I guess since we're talking to Bob, we might as well actually say hi to Bob. <laughs> you want to say hello there, Bob? Hi, Scott. <laughs> uh, Bob show spotlight on uh, Tuesday nights at nine, Wednesday at twelve. There's a picture of him and Dave. Didn't we, see any we, footage we of. No I didn't see any footage of the duo this no, year. No, we didn't get no duo this year. No duo. No, because I, I was I was running from. Unbelievable. I was running from doing the camera to watch the table, back to do the camera. So I was kind of. Uh. Didn't wow. have a chance really to Didn't get, happen. get it. I wonder if Dave was happy about that or sad. Uh, a little both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bob shows probably on Tuesday nights at 9, Wednesday at 12. I might have already said that. Michael Tui, Mike Tui in the studio, our director extraordinaire. Expose Cinema Friday nights at 9, Wednesdays at 1. And uh, Connor Fago, the production yes. assistant extraordinaire. Yes. Holding down the fort is. Uh, McFadden is on vacation. Strange, strange Man's still missing in action. Is, yeah, we have we haven't heard from him in so long. I, I don't know where he is. You know, we can't get him. We can't find him. But we are live. We are here. Maybe he'll call in. He calls sometimes. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from him in a while. 203-792-4101 is the number. We're here until seven o'clock. If you want to give a call, if you're uh, excited about something, pumped up about something, you want to. Give a call. Maybe you're all turned out for the show and you want to uh, get on the line. We'll, so, we'll accept uh, your call. Where would you like to start? Well, we got a plug. Uh, speaking of being all turned out for something, I'm turned out for the show next week. And I know Black Rock Social is turned out to be opening for Steel Pulse next week at the warehouse in Fairfield on Wednesday night. So we definitely got to plug that one more time. Uh, I'm still waiting on my boy Mikey Dreadlock, aka Sugar Summers, to let me know if he's giving me VIP status. He's in the Philippines right now, Bob. Visiting his father. He's visiting his father. Oh. I'm like, are you crazy? You got a show where you're opening up for Steel Pulse next week. Don't get on any planes right now. Yeah. Unbelievable. He's flying out to the Philippines, so he's there, but I'm waiting to find out on that VIP status. You might be uh, you might be sitting on the outside looking in. I don't know. I'd like to be backstage hanging out with Steel Pulse, legends of reggae. So that would be nice. Speaking of legends, Bob, we will turn our attention Tensions. to the passing yes. of a uh, all-time Time. legend, New York legend. Yeah, and really the whole world of sports, one yes. of the iconic figures uh, of the 20th century. Uh, Yogi Berra passed away. Uh, yesterday uh, at, at, the at, the, of at the age of 90 ironically enough he passed away on the same day that he made his debut with the New York Yankees so there was some uh, poetic justice there and uh, for those of you who do not know on his first at bat Bob Yogi hit a home, home run, run yes I do know when that. he did make his debut way back in 1946 uh, so you know he was uh, and that was just the start of a legendary career. Yogi Berra obviously known for his 
wit, his uh, funny comments, oh, yes. which we'll get to some of I those have, quotes. I have like about four or five of his books, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, quite the character, known for all that. Sometimes as time goes on, people forget how great a player he was, though. Well, and if see. it comes to baseball, really there's only a few players, athletes of all time. Bill Russell comes to mind, who was uh, Yogi, was right in right. that category as far as winners go. Right. 10 World Series, Series titles, 14 appearances. He played in more games in the World Series than any player ever and had more hits, more doubles in the World Series play. Uh, he was a three-time MVP, about yeah. 51, 54, and 55 mm -hmm. uh, were the years that he won. Um, you know, so, and I think even in his coaching, I think I saw 21 appearances Plus, total in the World Series, right? He is the Catcher. Only guy to catch a perfect game, game. in the World Series, series 1956, Don Larson. Don Larson's perfect game in the World Series. Um, you know, so, I mean, he was an unbelievable player. His numbers, you know, were tremendous. This was one number that jumped out at me. He had a season, Bob, where he had 652 at-bats, only struck out 12 times. I know. Unbelievable. And he was a free swinger. Oh, yeah. He was the type of guy who swung at anything. Not you know you know strictly in the strike zone. So amazing that he would only strike out 12 times as a free swinger. Um, he's listed as probably Johnny Bench pretty much is known as the greatest catcher ever. Right. You could make a pretty serious ar uh, argument. argument that one Lawrence Peter, aka Yogi Berra, is the greatest catcher of all time. But most people would say Johnny Bench. But Yogi is right there. And one of the great players, really, of all time, as we said. Um, Hall of Famer, obviously, in 1972, he went in. Um, he coached both the Yankees and Mets, yes. played for the Bo Yankees and Mets as yes. well. Um, led the Yankees to the World Series title in 1964, and he was the guy who was in charge of the You Gotta Believe Steve. Mets yes, in 1973. And one of his most famous quotes, it ain't over till it's, it's over, over, is from that season. Yep. Um, he also, as a player, 11 straight seasons of 100-plus RBIs, not too shabby. Uh, to look at him, he didn't really look like a great athlete, short and stocky type of guy, uh, but he could play the game, and he was pretty incredible. He was a um, U.S. Navy veteran. On uh, D-Day, he was on a gunboat supporting uh, the troops that were you know, invading there uh, in 1944, so he was... Yeah, you know, American hero as well as an iconic player. You want to get to some quotes here, Bob? Yes. We mentioned the eight and, it ain't over till it's over. His other most famous quote, it's like deja vu all, all over, over again. again. Uh, on the topic of uh, passing away, here was a couple good ones. Always go to other people's funerals, yeah. otherwise they, they won't, won't come, come to, you. to yours. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. When he was asked where he should be buried, he said, I don't know, surprise me. <laughs> Um, one of the, my favorite quotes, no one goes there nowadays, it's too crowded. Speaking of a popular uh, New York restaurant. I, ha I got one for you. What do you got? I got one from uh, uh, Boughton when he was at one of the Western uh, breakfasts. Uh -huh. He says, um, him and him, Yogi and Thorazudo were on a trip to go in the Philly, right? Right. Well, they're going the wrong way. But in uh, some of uh, Scooter says to him, he says, I think we're going the wrong way. Yeah, but we're making great time. <laughs> it reminds me of the, uh, when you come to a fork in a road, take it. Yeah. Comment. Uh, baseball's 90% mental. The other yeah, half is baseball. physical. Uh, you be this is another, he's interesting with his math numbers. Yes. You better cut the pizza in four pieces because I'm not hungry enough to eat six. <laughs> <laughs> I usually take a two-hour nap from uh, one to four. Well, Again, Man with actually, the math. Man Mantle had one. He says, um, <laughs> if everyone asks directions, ask Yogi, because you always get it, r get it wrong. <laughs> right. It's get it gets late early, yeah. another good one. This was one I don't know what he was talking about when he said this. Even Napoleon had his Watergate. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. Maybe he's talking about Nixon. I, I don't know. Because remember, Nixon was a big Met fan, so. Maybe. Uh, he hits from both sides of the plate. He's uh, amphibious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it ain't the heat, it's the humility. Yeah. Take it with a grin of salt, another good one. And then when he was asked about all the crazy things he said, he said, I never said most of the things I said. So who knows? Yogi Bear, an all-time great, absolutely legend. 
You know, I am not a Yankee fan, obviously, but I can uh, recognize greatness and great characters in the world of sports. So, you know, rest in peace, Yogi Bear, one of the greats, an absolute legend. Speaking of the uh, Yankees, tough loss last night after they honored Yogi before the game up in Toronto. They were shut out 4-0. So Toronto takes two of three from that final series of the year. And the Yankees fall three and a half games back with, I believe, only nine, nine. to go. Toronto, how about this, Bob, went 13 and six yeah. against the Yankees this year. Um, and the Yankees typically, especially at home, usually beat up on Toronto. So right. things have finally turned. Uh, well, Toronto obviously is going right. to make the playoffs now. First time since they won the World Series, back to back, 91 and 92 and 93, right? right. Um, so uh, it'll, Toronto is finally going to taste the postseason once again. Yankees are looking square in the face of that one game playoff. Who will they play, however? That's the Houston question. holding on for dear life, barely, as they lost two out of three to the Angels this week. Right. Uh, we know Texas has moved clear of them into first place in their division out west. Uh, Houston at 80 and 73, the Angels 78 and 74, so a game and a half up on them. Only a game up on the Twinkies. Yeah. Minnesota Twins right there. Indians kind of in the mix, but I don't think they'll don't be able to get Indians in. Will have a... But the Twins and the Angels have a legitimate chance to pass the Astros, who are three and seven in their last ten, falling fast after being really the second best team in the American League for much of the year. But this past month has been a disaster. So the Astros, young players, young team. Their future is bright, but their future might not be, as, you, as those, Yogi uh, once said, the future isn't what it used to be. be. And then uh, might not be what it was no. looking like this year. They look like their future was now. Yeah. The future might still be in the future for them because they might not hold on with only nine to go. Casey's still going strong, or they? Casey is struggling as well, but they've got such a huge cushion, it doesn't really matter for them. These games don't mean much, but they'd like to be playing better heading in uh, to the postseason play. Speaking of like to be pe playing better, your Mets might like to be playing a little better. Yeah, we need a little help. <laughs> Lost two out of three to the Yankees last week. That wasn't good. No, Lost again to the Braves Race. last night. So they're struggling a little bit. And Bob, I must admit, I was mistaken when I was looking at the schedule and talking about the schedule in the last couple weeks. Foolish me. I was looking at the schedule thinking that, like most baseball seasons, the season ended in September. No, it ends in Regular October. season is ending in October. October. What is that about this year? Hey. So they do have three more games at home yes. against the Nationals, who lost again last night. So there's still a six-and-a-half game lead, as we mentioned, about nine to go, depending on the team. So I don't think they can blow this. But they definitely well, they've done don't. that in the past, though. Well, yeah, we remember when they were up seven with 17 and a half to go. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, my Red Sox have played much better. Uh, we didn't mention it last week. David Ortiz did hit number 500, so he's gone p past that, so good for him. Uh, he got that done with this year. Won't have to worry about starting the season next year looking for that landmark. Uh, and then the other teams that are in the National League, really it's just down to Pittsburgh and the Cubs. The Pirates are up two games on the Cubbies for the uh, one and two on the wild card to see who gets to play at home. The Pirates, I mean, this is a really tough for them. Right. Them and the Cardinals are the only teams with 90 plus wins on the season right now. Yeah. And they're going to have to play a one game playoff against the Cubbies. Speaking of Cubbies, real quick. What do you, oh, uh, yeah, former Western, what do you got? Former Western, Michael Holt. He got let go by the Cubs mm -hmm. and got picked up by the White Sox. Moved across town yeah, to the White so, Sox. And the White Sox are playing the Yankees tonight. Right. So, so we'll he'll be uh, he'll be turned up to be playing yeah. back in the bigs as yeah. he uh, was let go by the Cubbies. But with nine to go, um, definitely uh, everybody's getting a little bit hyped. A little turn out mm -hmm. uh, looking to see who finishes where in the uh, Major League pennant races. You know, well, not too much drama, really. Who, who's, who else besides the Yankees are in the wild card? Well, I mean, it's it's Houston holding on against yeah. the Angels. So they're gonna right now. They would play Houston, 
and they would be home. The Yankees are going to be home for that game, but the Angels are right there and the Twins right there. So it's one of those three teams. We know that they never, uh, the Twins never beat the Yankees, so that would be the best matchup right. for the Yankees. Angels have given the Yankees trouble in the past yeah. historically, so that could be good. Houston played very well against the Yankees this year, but they're struggling and they're a young team. So after the great year they had, getting a one-game game, game uh, one game playoff in the house that A Royd built yeah, yeah, might which, be a little bit too much for them to yeah, handle. A Royd had to sit, sit most of the uh, Met game out, Met series out. Right, right. Um, yeah, he did sit out some of that, so uh, we'll we see get a what phone happens. Call? I don't know. We'll I hear the phone, phone ringing call. there. Maybe they're calling for us. 203 792 4101 is the number. We're about to switch gears to uh, football. We'll see if somebody's actually calling into oh, the show. We actually got a phone? Uh, some interesting stuff happened. Yeah. We do have a call. All right, let's check it out. I think so. Uh, hello, we have a caller on the line. Thank you for calling. Uh, how you doing? This is, uh, this is Uncle Buck here calling. Uncle, Uncle Buck, Buck, the long lost we Uncle Buck. We haven't heard from him in a long time. How you doing, Uncle Buck? Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, the show is just kind of delicious, you know? You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Scotty Liz, we try to make it that way, Uncle yeah. Buck. What's on your mind, What's Uncle Buck? What's happening with the Giants there, Scott? Well, we were just about to turn the page to the NFL. I was stalling because Bob's so depressed about his G men. Yeah, we're 0 2. We could be 0 3 tonight. I know. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't say that. Well, uh, by the way, uh, Bob, uh, I hope you feel better. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, yes, Bob has been having his litany list of medical problems, uh, but he's looking good. He's doing good here, so uh, we'll get. Oh, that's good. We think he's doing okay. What uh, What do you think about the Giants, uh, Uncle Buck? Are they going to beat the Redskins tonight, or are they going to uh, uh, fall to 0-3? Uh, no, but I don't think so. Redskins, surprisingly, uh, defensively, I would say mostly, is the big surprise. Offensively, yeah. they've been okay. Running game is pretty good, and they went to Cousins. They uh, yeah. basically, you know, deactivated RG3 before the yeah. season started. He's not even dressed when these games take place. But they have actually not given up too many points, uh, the Redskins. So, you know, they played the Rams, who are not great, especially on the road. And the Dolphins, who lost to the Jaguars this weekend, so we don't know how good the Jaguars are. But it is an interesting game tonight. Giants need it bad. They cannot fall to 0-3. No, they can't. I mean, it's, uh, they'll end up maybe, mm, oh, maybe something like... 0-6? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, remember uh, last year know, they started 0-6. They, they may end up 8-8, eight eight, you know what I mean, if they oh. continue like this. Well, in this, div in this division, that might be okay, because yeah, the Cowboys at 2-0 and oh are now dealing with major injuries. Des Bryant out. And then Tony the Romo, Romo goes and breaks his collarbone, so he's out. Both those guys won't be back until at the earliest, week 10. So they're the top team, but they have their uh, biggest weapons yeah, yeah. are out. And Witten, Jason e Witten, their tight end is hurt. Very good either. We know that DeMarco Murray left for the Eagles, and the Eagles stink right now. What is going on with the Eagles at 0-2? They couldn't score any points against the Cowboys last week. That was a very depressing game, and they played the oh, I Jets. Know, I know. My granddaughter is an Eagles fan, and uh, it, it doesn't look too good with them. No. Yeah, so she must be very upset with all those Eagle fans. And the uh, Chip Kelly, you know, is supposed to be this great coach, making right. all these moves, getting rid of all his players. And he's got all these new guys in there, and they can't play. They can't win. So, And they play the Jets this yeah. weekend, surprising, at 2-0. and right, we got yeah. some – how about this for surprises around the NFL? The Buccaneers, the Browns, the Jaguars, and the Raiders all won last week. Oh my! Yeah, what a, as what well as the Vikings <laughs> and the Redskins, so that was a big surprise. How about this for teams that are 0-2? The Saints, the Lions, the Bears, the Ravens, the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, Seahawks, the Giants, and the Colts. That's a lot. All at 0-2. I don't believe it. I, I wonder if the Bucs are going to commit suicide, you know, but why? Maybe. I don't know. But uh, a lot of teams not looking good. The Saints in particular look really bad. Drew Brees has got a hurt shoulder. The Lions, maybe they're falling apart. They had their window of opportunity the last couple of years to do something, but they didn't do it in the playoffs. The Bears, I mean, they're, they're down, so that's not a huge surprise. But the Ravens, that's a surprise. As I said last week, I hope the Ravens and Colts lose every game they play oh. this year. So we're two weeks in, we're looking oh, good yeah. with that. 
as they lost what do you to think the. What about Green Bay this uh, year? Well, I think Green Bay is good. They seem to be doing okay without Jordy Nelson, their top wide receiver. They have so many weapons. Uh, that pickup of James Jones was a pretty good one for them in the wide receiver core. And you know Rodgers is great. I mean, they should have been in the Super Bowl last year. They absolutely blew that game to the Seahawks. So, you know, I think they'll actually get back uh, and maybe get things going. How about this for teams that are 2-0, and speaking of surprises? Some of them not too surprising, but some that are. The Broncos, the Panthers recovered from their bad year last year. Right. The Cardinals with Carson Palmer healthy looking very good. Bengals, Falcons recovering from their uh, yeah. bad season, and they came from behind against those G-men. Cowboys, Packers, the Jets, yeah. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets at 2-0, and the Patriots, no surprise right. there. So we got a bunch of teams 2-0, a bunch of surprises at 0-2. So, so some uh, crazy things happening in the NFL. What about the evil director's uh, Chiefs? The Chiefs, yeah. uh, they blew that game. How about that game on Thursday night against yeah. Denver? Yeah. They gave up the touchdown to tie it with about a minute left, and then uh, they fumble it. Yeah. Jamal Charles and the Broncos pick it up and score the game-winning touchdown with 30 seconds left in Kansas City. And he has not lost to KC as a starter in Denver. And I believe even when he was in Indy, he was like, he's all time like 11 and one against the Chiefs, Peyton Manning is. So uh, they know all too well about heartbreak when it comes to facing Peyton, no matter where he is, Denver mm. or Indy. So some crazy things happening. Some interesting games this weekend. Uh, Giants tonight, obviously against the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah. Uncle, Uncle Buck, do you want to stay on the line or should we let you go here? Oh, uh, I just want to uh, just, as, as an old philosopher said, uh, watch, don't bet. <laughs> watch, but don't bet. Somebody else call in, but uh, it was great uh, talking to you. Good. And Bob, you stay well now. All right, well, thanks for sign off and get the rep, uh, and watch the rest of the show. Thanks for calling, okay. Uncle Buck. We'll catch you next bye, time. Bye. Uncle Buck, to getting back on the horn. Like to yeah. see it. Been a while with him. Uh, so tonight, obviously, huge game. Giants at Redskins. You got to win this game. I mean, you went down there last year and pounded the Redskins, but yeah. I, I didn't realize this game was actually in Washington. So that bodes well for the Redskins, who could move to 2-1 and one and all of a sudden be looking pretty good in this down division. Uh, the Jaguars play at the Patriots. Eagles, I mentioned, at the Jets staying in your division. So uh, if the Eagles fall to 0-3, there's going to be a mutiny down there. Chip Kelly's going to get run out of oh, town yeah. quick. Uh, Falcons, who are 2-0, and are at the Cowboys. The Cowboys now dealing with major injuries. Yeah. Um, we saw the goes. Raiders and the Browns both won last week. Johnny so, Manziel led the Browns to victory. So what do you However, think they're benching him back for their injured quarterback who's coming back. And the Raiders are at the Browns this weekend. So uh, one of those two teams is going to lose this weekend. Bengals at the Ravens. I say go Bengals, go Cincy. I hope the Ravens lose again. 49ers are one in one. Uh, they got pummeled, absolutely oh, crushed terrible. by the Steelers this past weekend. They go to Arizona. Arizona's my team to watch this year. I right. like the Cardinals. Uh, I like them to beat uh, the 49ers. Bears looking to get off the schneid, but they are at Seattle, who is definitely looking to win. Cam Chancellor ends his holdout to help that defense. Uh, so we'll see what happens up there. I expect Seattle to get a win this weekend. Chiefs get another primetime game at Green Bay, I Where's think that? our evil director, and also remember Sugar Summers, uh, yeah. Fatty Roots, he's a big Chiefs fan as well. What about I don't think he's Rexy? gonna be happy Where's on Monday Bills? night. Uh, Bills are playing, I believe, Miami this weekend. Patriots, yes, right there we see, telling those Bills fans to keep quiet up who's, there. Who's the Pats get this week? Uh, Jaguars uh, coming into town, and the Jaguars beat the Dolphins this weekend, so they're one and one. Uh, so an interesting uh, weekend. Uh, they were one of those surprise teams to win. So uh, some big games coming up this weekend. We'll see what happens. It was sure nice to see the Patriots all turned up to uh, shut down those Buffalo Bills and Sexy Rexy. How about that? Tom Brady throwing for uh, 460 something yards in that yeah. game. I think he was turned up for what? You know what I'm saying, Bob? Oh, I know. He was fired up. And that's uh, and I think he's going to be that way all season, really. I think so, too. Uh, as he's going to get revenge on anybody who's ever wronged him, which is basically the entire NFL. Right. Uh, and he's just going to put it in their face all season long. So we'll talk plenty about the Patriots and how fired they are 
to uh, maybe, maybe pull a little 2007, except for this time they're going to finish the deal. College football, UConn went to Missouri, top 25 team, the two-time defending uh, SEC East champion, and they gave Missouri everything they could handle, Bob. I will say this much about UConn. Can they please go a game without giving up a safety? No, no. They ha- they Every that. game they give up a safety. They were winning 6-2 to two at the half. Yeah. They missed an extra point, which came back and loomed large because they ended up falling behind 9-6 on a uh, fourth and goal, and Missouri went for it. Uh, and they did score that touchdown to go up 9-6 in the third quarter. UConn drives the field and has a game-tying field goal situation. Would have been a game-winning field right. goal situation if they hadn't missed that extra point. Coach Diaco rolls the dice and calls a fake field goal. With 45 seconds left, they throw an interception yeah. and they lose the game 9-6. to six. Got to give them credit for going for the win instead of the tie there on the road. I don't have a problem with that. Would have been nice if they didn't give up a safety or right. miss an extra point. They got Navy this weekend, and Navy well, is new very, to the AAC. Yeah, that should be a very, very good game. Uh, so this is their uh, first division game for uh, UConn. They open with Navy. It's in uh, UConn up at the Rent. The Wrench, people, the Wrench, not the Rent. Uh, I'm sure everybody will be turned out up there, uh, getting ready for that game uh, against Navy, who is 2-0. They already played an AAC game. They beat East Carolina last weekend. That's going to be a tough game. Yeah. Navy is a good team. Uh, my Colorado State team lost a brutal overtime, back-to-back overtime losses, this time against division rival the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Colorado blocked field goal in overtime. They lose the game by three. Unbelievable. That was a brutal game. Big game of the weekend was Bama, Bob. Yeah, Bama is watching that game. With and the- they have fallen to number 12. They lose to Ole Miss for the second year in a row. How about that? And the first time Ole Miss beat Bama in Alabama since 1988. Mm-hmm. Bama, uh, Ole Miss, I mean, moves to number three. Michigan State is now number two. Ohio State barely holding on to number one as they snuck by yeah. Northern Illinois, a MAC team. Did not look good at all. Stanford was a big winner over USC. USC fell from 6th to 19th now. Big drop for them. Uh, LSU pummeled Auburn. Auburn, we will not hear from them the rest of the year. They're out of the top 25. LSU's moved to number 8. Notre Dame held on against Georgia Tech, who is number 20. Notre Dame sits at number 6 despite the injury. Uh, Big games this weekend, BYU at Michigan. Uh, Michigan State, uh, as I mentioned, is number two. So, all right, we are out of here. We will be live next week again. I believe so. So uh, we'll see, and uh, hopefully you will tune in. Maybe we'll hear from Uncle Buck or some of you other people out there now that we're back live again and the phone lines are open. All right, take care.